Well, Hawthorne are going for the ball and are starting to pay dividends. Yes, an excellent start by the Hawks. That is the first time you've seen that. Is that correct? Yeah, I've, I've never had enough guts to watch it, to be honest. Oh, yeah, it was just one of those... Um... Only a couple of little things, Malcolm, wasn't it? I mean, you look back at that, the Steve Hocking when he was yeah. down there on Dermot. Um... Just carried him by an inch. And... Yep. Billy, you know, Billy's just almost got a mark and they race it down the moon. Yeah, I... A couple of match-ups. Yeah, yeah, we just... Um, I, Peter Curran was a bit hard to match up at yeah. six foot three. We just didn't quite have a defender like that. But, no, I've never really watched it. I, I think the moment for, for Geelong to get back into a grand final, to lose by a kick at the end of the day, uh, there were some terrific manful things done on the day from both sides. And mm. uh, the only thing I remember about it is that the following year we paid the penalty because we had six blokes in hospital, which we didn't mention anything about for a couple of years. And yeah. Hawthorne... Well, they, they, they had a yeah, few too. They had half a dozen in the hospital too. So it was really one of those very, very crunchy games that um, I suppose people remember as a great grand final. Do you think you ever will sit down and watch the whole game? Uh, probably not. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps when I'm old, I've got nothing else to do, I will. <laughs> do you see that... I mean, is that an opportunity that's gone begging? Oh, for, I, you, for you as a coach and the team? I think, I think every time... I mean, some know. may say, well, there was Blight's chance to win a flag. If ever he had a chance, and Geelong... That could have been. I know you've been in the grand final since then. Yeah, I, th I think that Hawthorne. That was probably the last of the dynasty. You know, they won in '88 yeah. and '89. They'd won five for the decade, and and we just almost got them. But uh, they were good enough to win it. Um, the only thing I think about, and it's true, that I mean, the siren beat us really. Yeah. Um, you know, really, it's a timekeeper's fault. You couldn't blame anybody else for the game other than them blowing the time too early. For another three minutes, we might have won it. I just. People can't get it right, can they? No, but I've got a headache thinking about it all the time, I can tell you. Well, look, there are lots of positives to come out of the series for Geelong, none the least of which was the gentleman who wore number five. I mean, just a fantastic series. And before we talk to Malcolm uh, about that performance, let's have a look at Gary Ablett in action in that final series. And laconically, Bruce Lindner turns on the way. And a magnificent mark taken by Ablett. Runs his kick inside 50. Huge pack of players, Ablett. Has he come down with that mark? That is an amazing grab. Free kick being picked out of it to Stoneham. It's against Dersma. Stoneham's kick into the forward pocket. Ablett. Oh! How do you describe that? Really? Miraculous stuff by Gary Ablett. Forecast just a few minutes earlier. Ablett goes for goal. Magnificent kick. 13 points the difference after that goal kick by David Cameron down to half forward. Ablett again. Creating opportunities. 25 metres. Pulls it back. Ablett will come in from the side. Now he opts out of the contest. He did the right thing. He kept his composure well. The midfield and Burke. He plays on. Kick towards centre half forward. Ablett's in front. Strong mark. Wonderful mark. Ablett wasting no time. Around Hamilton. Goes inside 50. Gets his second goal. Magic. Geelong are pumped up. Brunt. Short to half forward, Ablett! Oh. Wall is still running Essendon's way. On his knees, Watson, Bailey, coming to meet him, Stoneham, brilliantly played. Shovels it out to accommodate Ablett. Ablett decides to run, down towards the 50. Goes long, it's bending back. That is a magnificent <laughs> goal! A great game. Runs, hard against the boundary line. Pulls it back towards the pocket. Over the top! Guess who? Stoneham behind the back. Ablett in the pocket. Don't tell me. I don't believe it. <laughs> Feeds the hand pass to Bairstow. Bairstow goes down towards half forward. Ablett! That's a party trick. Not a mark. <laughs> One down by Flanagan that time with the backhand. Hughes comes away. The time remaining. The cats are looking better. Muse goes long down towards the pocket. Ablett! Oh, what a mark! Well, that's what we came to see, Dennis. Cleared by Hawthorne to Geelong in 1983. Will he come back to Hawthorne? Check side check. Oh, nonchalant. Flanagan now doing the ruck work against Deer. Ablett over the top. Snapshot by Gary Ablett. This is close. This is Gary Hawking, freed by the tribunal to play in this game earlier in the week. In fact, they never got that far, and Ablett just gets around Lidner, unloads into the forward line yet again. Kennedy in front, Ablett over the top. Oh, what a mark. Lidner breaks away from halfback. The second bounce carries into centre wing. Will Shepard it. Goes long down towards the pocket. Ablett is there, almost the one-hander. Finds it on the ground from 25 metres out. He's kicked it. His eighth goal. Brunch goes 
for goal. Bramless at the back, Ablett. He goes Ablett for goal number nine, and he's threaded it. Yes, I think it was 27 he finished with a wonderful series. You're a very gifted player. When you look at someone like Malcolm, uh, when like um, Gary Ablett, I mean, does he take your breath away? Yeah, he does. Um, he's, he's one of those players with that uncanny sense on the football ground. And, uh, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that, uh, that I've seen him do has been very, very special. And the Geelong people have been very fortunate. From a coach's point of view, what do you see as his greatest asset? I mean, you can see in that he's a wonderful reader of the game. His goal-kicking ability is uncanny. His marking is sensational. I think that um, the first thing I noticed about Gary when I first got to Geelong was that that, that quickness. Mm. I mean, he was almost like a true cat. And he had this great uh, pace off the mark or great ability to change direction. And I think it was just that fantastic uh, agility that he had. You've played in a couple of fair games, you know. One was back in 1976, wasn't it? Gee, that is a long time ago, isn't it? Now? Well, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and see M. Blight in action in a rib tickler in 1976. 1976, we go out to Prince's Park for another absolute pearl of a game. 5 90 metres. But he's going to have a kick, all right. It's not over yet. Not over yet. What drama here at Prince's Park. Malcolm Blight, it's a big kick. It's a murderous kick. Showed us a bit of everything there. 11, 10, 76. Uh, I know you've done a couple of things you'd probably rather not see, but I'm sure, you know, we've all made mistakes, haven't we? Let's oh, be honest. I, I invented some, though. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> say no more. Let's have a look at a couple here, Malcolm, then we'll have a chat about them. The names may change year by year, but the drama of league football remains the same. As Mal Black found out on this dreadful day against Hawthorne. When Blight came in for this free kick after the siren, North trailed by one point. I think the siren has gone, Louis. I think so. I'm not too sure. Jack, we'll see what he does with this kick. The siren may have gone. Hope he doesn't miss. Here he goes now. It'll be a dead end if he missed the kick. He's kicked it out of bounds. That's what I thought could have happened before. He's kicked it out of bounds, and Hawthorne have won the game. The Spencer one over here to McCann. This could be a goal. Now it's back to Blight for goal number four. He couldn't miss this. He's run the... I think he might have put that through for a point. He's run the wrong way. It's unbelievable. He thought that was the goal. He really still thinks it now. Look, it is unbelievable because I, I was done better. Than... <laughs> what were you thinking? Actually, actually I reckon that the time today has been fantastic. And uh, is my time up about now? Just a moment. <laughs> what were you thinking then? No, seriously. Oh, what happened? Because I... even after <clears throat> you kicked it, you still thought it was a goal, didn't you? Yeah, I, I used to line up the goal umpire uh, when I was having a shot for goal and. Uh, Steve McCann handballed to me and I got a bit of a shock to get the handball and uh, I saw the goal umpire must have been on the goal post and he moved across and I just, just lost concentration and uh, I thought he moved aside for me to kick the goal. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. A couple of other points just before you go. Um, some may construe your coaching tactics at times unusual and different. Why, for example, did you put the towel, have the players with towels on their heads walking around the swimming pool? Have I got the story correct? Oh, I Almost. It was really um, just to think about what might happen and it was a pretty cold day in Geelong and um, we just tried to just say, oh, look, what you're expecting might happen didn't happen. We actually didn't go in the pool and, uh, oh, no, I, you know, sometimes you just look for a bit of an edge. Sometimes you, you line up and get bagged, but sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And lastly, uh, the Guard of Honour in Adelaide. What Did you think of that? Did the radio, was the radio on the blink going down the highway to Cadinia Park <laughs> or something one day? What happened? Oh, no, I, we, we, I've already said that. It was a mini final, we thought, and... Um, with no disrespect to the Crows, it was really trying to get uh, our guys uh, sort of just to focus in on a, on a very big game. Malcolm, it's great you could join us today on a serious note. Uh, all the best this time next Sunday for a big game against Collingwood, and we wish you well for the remainder of the season. Thanks very much, Sandy. Malcolm Blight, one of our special guests today on our No Football Sunday.